Well, hey guys, Falcus. I'm back. And I don't want to be here, but let's go. Solve it, obviously. But I guess I have to go through that door. Oh, there's another box. Trapped here. What? Oh. There's some indestructible bugs. Okay, that's enough. It's a pretty big room. That sounded like that was coming from over there. Not over there. Right over here. Okay. We're just gonna go to the tabularium. Okay. Traveling to Dover meant going through Canterbury. He made sure to pay a visit to avoid the sense of guilt connected with the neglect of family. Okay. That was weird. The Librirari. Rare. Sixteenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Okay, that was boring.
Okay, let's go. I, I, I don't even know what the heck I was doing. It's a big room. It's not scary. It's dark out there, but... That's not a very nice picture. There are a lot of holes in the ceiling for this place. Okay, so, <clears throat> piano, time to practice my crouching skills. Diligente imaginis tabulatus. Floor plans. Uh, okay. Seems like a very complicated way to say floor plans, but tinderbox. that back down. And they put a chair back. Because I just threw that one. No. It, stop touching the piano. Stay like this. Stairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. 
Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Oh dear. Okay. So we're in Prussia, obviously. Oh, whoa. but it usually spam clicking things doesn't work. That worked. Okay, that's I'm cool with that. You have to be swift. When you activate the first one, you hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, Dan. I know you guys heard that. Folklore. Altstadt in Brenningburg Castle, 1801. Another region rich with lores Altstadt, deeper in the East Prussian woods. For centuries there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and its neighbor, Castle Brenningburg. The quiet forest clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque as can be. Albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of the widespread superstition. All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations, since it certainly will serve as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twists on the tales, but there are some motives they keep reappearing. <coughs> reappearing. The Gatherers. The story reaches all the way back in the time of the Thirty Years' War. It's said that the soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold, dark woods and were forever damned to roam the grounds. Their bodies wrought by their tainted souls had left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have cited them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers as they seem to follow some ambition to still living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap saps, dragged behind them, which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? A visit undone. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, well known as the Eurydite, Oh, the well-known Eurydite visited Altstadt at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for remnants of a kingdom's past. During his stay, all the prominent members of society paid notice and is mentioned, and he is mentioned in many records of the time. 
One day he went to investigate a burrow in the northwestern Glades, only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Greenoble some ten years later. He dismissed the notion of ever visiting Altstadt, which makes you wonder what really happened. Who was this mysterious man who visited the sleepy hamlet in the woods, and what happened to him? The Immortal Baron The Baron of Brenningburg lives a reclusive life with his family in his castle nearby Altstadt, and like most of the noble birth, rumors are inherited alongside with the title. Researching history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands, claiming the role as the protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region flourish and remain popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to the lineage and heritage, therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully recorded. This has fed the idea that the Baron is in fact the one and same who came from the West over 300 years ago, lived through the time of occupation, and joined the coveted order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of this country. Backstory. Okay, so Okay, so I am assuming that is one of those books. Nope. Do they Oh they must all look like that. Okay, cool. Regarding closing of the wine cellar, Wilhelm and his fools have endangered my research long enough to their absent-minded handling of the human vessels. The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It's just a matter of time until they follow the trail to Brennenberg. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to avoid further investigation from the public. The wine cellar will therefore be sealed off until the matter has been handled. Either the king's men leave or they will starve. Whatever comes first, they cannot... They can rot for all I care. Maybe I will feed them some wine. It would, in a sense, solve both of my problems. But you drink wine. You don't. You're not fetic. This fetic implies you ate. Give me that. Oh my God. Not a long run. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Fuck this shit. Sam gave way to his tired body as he fell from the camel's back. He felt the wind gently sweep across his face and his dry, crusted lips. Uh, okay. Oh, hell. What is that? Uh, okay, okay. 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 Alright. I... I, uh... Uh... I do believe I've been playing long enough to go uh stay awesome guys bye